Oh, we'll <laughs> go ahead. Sure. I can ask uh, them later. Um, so, if I understand correctly, you're uh, you're at kind of the beginning points of formulating your model for like kind of predictive analytics, and, and I'm wondering. So you, eventually you're going to compare that to like the clinical gold standard, and so I'm wondering well, with like a, or like with the volumetric bone mineral density scan, okay. that's what gets ordered now. I'm I'm wondering uh, for someone who might be at a <coughs> risk for fracture, what's the level that warrants clinical intervention maybe right now? Is is it there's a scan that happens at one point, then another follow up happens with the follow up scan, and there's a certain percentage decrease. Uh, one rule density. Yeah, so is that the mineral density is the clinical not so it's aerial, sure. not volumetric. Okay. Um, and so if you're a little old lady, not saying you are, sure. but you're a little old man, whatever, you're compared to a population of normal, healthy young adults okay. of your sex and your race. And if you're you know the so this is based on World Health Organization, 1994, 84, 94, 94, 94. Um, So they, they wanted to study who's at risk for fracture. And so on an epidemiologic basis, jillions and jillions of people, right? They're going to decide that if you're one standard deviation below that normal young adult mean for bone mineral density, then you're osteopenic. Okay. So you've got some bone loss. Mm -hmm. If you're two and a half standard deviations below, then you're osteoporotic. So jump up and down, you're at risk for fracture. Sure. But it doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. So my mother, for instance, she fell and broke her hip when her bone mineral density was increasing. Mm -hmm. Then four years later, she was increasing her bone mineral density, and she fell and broke the rest of her leg. So now she's got Oh, I think it's 23 screws and plates and more metal than bone and everything else. Sure. So it's just it's just not a very good indicator. And yeah. And so I guess a follow-up question is: so that turnaround time for that bone mineral density scan is doesn't seem to take very long, I would assume. You walk in, push the button, and yeah. it spits out stuff. And so I guess comparing right now your uh, workflow, I guess, as far as getting that initial data, doing the kind of Model or putting that data into your model and having some spit out. Like, how do you, how does that turn around time compare with maybe what's used now and where where would you need to start cutting down that time to kind of actually make it? So there are a couple of ways to answer that. Um, so the biggest time sink now is in segmenting the data. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, it's not something that I've spent a lot of time on. There are some sort of automatic, you know, segmentation algorithms. Um, and I think that's something that needs to be improved upon. One way of doing it is an atlas-based approach. So you've already segmented some number of femurs, and so you're describing variability within the, you know, likely you're describing the variability of the next person that walks in. So based on prior knowledge, you can go towards segmenting that person quickly, right? So the whole thing wants to be an automated process. The, you know, this work, I haven't shown any, any work that required the solution of a finite element model. It's just you compare the new person to all the other people you've already got in your model. Mm -hmm. And so that doesn't take any time. Um, but you're still, and so you can go towards identifying who's at risk that way, but you still have to move towards what are you going to do about them? Um, so in the vertebral fracture R01 that I submitted in more recently, I, I guess I talked a little bit about, well, what if you optimize a person the way you optimize a building or a bridge? And so, you know, you've got constraints that you could look at in terms of these composite traits. So you've got real physiological restraints or constrictions, constraints on what you could do or what you would see you know, physiologically. And what if you look at these combinations of traits, and we talked about the case where it's the, you know, the really low, you know, the, the 20 that described cumulatively 1.5%. So what if you can target, what if we don't have a drug that does what it needs to do yet? But the thing is, we don't know what the target should be because it's always been you know, based on that World Health Organization thing, increase their bone mineral density. But that 
doesn't really seem to help. So what if we could, you know, formulate it in terms of an engineering problem, and given the constraints of the physiologic problem of the com combinations of traits that exist, and then try to optimize that person's individual structure, and then look at all these different therapy options, how could we go about fixing that particular person? And so that's where I see things going. And so that involves finite element work, involves optimization, but in another, the last aim in that R1 proposal, well, one of the aims was to do all that work and develop a, you know, a, a method to predict how to fix somebody, for lack of a better word. But you can also do that, you know, so now you're describing uncertainty variability in terms of probabilistic case. And so you can set up a response surface model where you explore these input parameter spaces and you get this big body of solutions before you even get anywhere. You fit, say, a Gaussian response surface to them, and now the person walks in, you just have to determine what their input parameters are, and in the time it takes to solve an analytical equation, now you have an answer. So that, I think, is how it's going to get into the clinic. Oh, do we have time? I mean, people will go if they gotta go, so. Oh, okay, I didn't know people were trying to get in. Um, so I just thought that you mentioned that you were trying to get in, into the microarchitecture mm -hmm. aspect of it. Um, so I think it'd be really interesting to kind of do the same applications as far as, you know, how does the Toronto structure vary in different regions. Um, are there any clinical modalities that get into that level yet? Well, so there are a couple of, uh, so it depends on what you're looking at. So HRP QCT, for instance, gives you, it's, I don't know, do you know what HRP QCT? I've heard of it before. But. So small bore, mm -hmm. uh, limited to uh, periphery. Mm -hmm. So you can get higher, high resolution, say, 84 micron resolution for a small region of your wrist. Okay. Or, you know, some people have done it with tibia, mm -hmm. but it's a small part. You can see microarchitecture there. The other way of doing it is, in terms of you know, prior knowledge, where if you've got, and some people have done this, and it's another thing that's in my, on my list of things that I'm, I'm gathering the pieces to work on, but if you've got a number of vertebral bodies or a number of femurs that you've got clinical CT data for, and you've also got high resolution micro CT data for, say, then there are going to be patterns in there. So there's some maximum likelihood methods and things like that where you could go about interpreting or estimating or predicting, however you want to say it, based on this bone, how you would expect their microarchitecture to be distributed. And you know, it's all related to, <coughs> when you tie it up at the continuum level, it's related to VMD, right? So that distribution of QCT data. And it's all, you know, bad. It's you, know, you get intensity levels or grayscale levels based on how much bone you've got and the mineralization of that bone, right? And along with that is, you know, certainly a particular, well, so the vertebral trabecular bone generally oriented, you know, cranial caudally, um, and so things like that. That if you've got enough data, well, people do it without enough data. And I argue that's not the best approach. But if you gather that prior knowledge, then you could use it in sort of a predictive method. And that's another thing. So what if, one of the questions first is what, and so my R1 now is going towards, well, what if you have all this microarchitectural micro distribution data? The assumption is it's gonna improve predictions, right? Because you're describing more of the structure, more of the structural organization multiple length scales and all that. And if it doesn't, then, you know, you don't really need to do it in the clinic either. Um, there are other things like, uh, so the clinic, you're limited, one of the arguments against QCT in the clinic is radiation dosage. But there are people there that are, are people in you know, radiology research, physics-based research, that they're trying to limit or lower the amount of radiation. So I think, you know, Computers keep getting faster and more powerful and all that, and technology keeps changing. And so there are some ways, based on prior knowledge again, of reconstructing CT data that 
if you reconstructed it now using normal methods because it's you know, you'd get a lot of noise. So how can you get rid of that noise using lower intensity or um, how can you get rid of that noise in lower uh, radiation dosage kind of approach? You know, so so if you can lower so you know the it's all about how much radiation you want to give a person. And so that noise is related to, you know, um, well, so radiation dosage, but it's also in contrast and current and all that stuff, right? But it's also related to region of interest. Mm -hmm. So if technology keeps changing, if now you can do it, you know, you can measure microarchitecture reasonably, at least in you know, a small piece of bone, maybe someday you can measure it in the trunk and things like that. It's complicated, but. So there are a couple different, you know, one way, maybe somebody else will figure it out. The other way, maybe stuff I'm doing can help point towards what that distribution of microstructure would be. Yeah. Okay, but clearly there's interest, right? Look at all those questions. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you.